Let's learn about North America. North America is Earth's third largest continent. It's bordered by the Atlantic Ocean to the east, the Pacific Ocean to the west, and the Arctic Ocean to the north. The southern part of North America is Central America, which connects to South America at the Isthmus of Panama. Central America has tropical rainforests and cloud forests, which makes it a biodiversity hotspot, a place where lots of different animals and plants live. Central America is home to animals like sloths, poison dart frogs, jeweled scarab beetles, colorful birds called quetzals, and the only spider known to eat mostly plants. Most spiders eat mostly insects or other spiders, but a kind of jumping spider called Bagheera kiplingi mostly eats pellets made by acacia trees and nectar, and some ant larvas. North America includes the islands in the Caribbean Sea. The Caribbean island of Cuba is home to the world's smallest bird the bee hummingbird. The Caribbean is also where the world's smallest known snake was discovered, the Barbados thread snake. The middle of North America is mostly taken up by the Great Plains, thousands of square miles of grasslands that don't get much rain. The Great Plains is the home of North America's largest land animal, the American bison. A full-grown bison can weigh more than a ton. In the far north of North America, there is a kind of ecosystem called tundra, where the ground is frozen for most of the year and trees don't grow. Tundra is home to the muskox. Muskoxen look like bison, but are actually more closely related to sheep and goats. Caribou also live here. Caribou are also called reindeer. Unlike most deer, reindeer males and females both grow antlers. Snowy owls and arctic foxes also live in the tundra, and it's an important habitat for migrating birds in the summer. The biggest island in the world is in North America's Arctic. It's called Greenland, even though it's mostly covered in ice. There have been some amazing finds from dinosaur times in North America. This is Quetzalcoatlus the biggest pterosaur ever discovered. Pterosaurs were relatives of dinosaurs that could fly. The Quetzalcoatlus had a wingspan as wide as a small airplane. One of my favorite places in North America is Dinosaur National Monument, where you can see and even touch a wall of dinosaur bones that fossilized together in a riverbed 149 million years ago. North America is also where scientists found Chicxulub Crater, where an asteroid hit the Earth 66 million years ago, ending the time of the dinosaurs. People first came to North America over 14,000 years ago, from Asia. They started farming in Central America by about 9,000 years ago. These farming societies grew into advanced civilizations like the Olmecs, who created intricate stone carvings, and the Maya, who built pyramids, created a complex calendar, and developed a writing system. Some of the largest cities in ancient North America were Teotihuacan, near where Mexico City is today, Mesa Verde, in what's now Colorado, and Cahokia in Illinois. The ancient people of southern North America had trade networks that connected them with people in South America, and ancient people in what's now Alaska traded with people in Asia across the Bering Strait. Europeans discovered North America about a thousand years ago, when Viking explorers settled in Greenland. One Viking outpost has even been discovered in Canada. The Vikings were there to hunt for walruses, to trade their ivory tusks back in Europe, where they were valuable for carving works of art. The Vikings also sold unicorn horns, which were actually teeth from arctic whales called narwhals. Male narwhals grow one long spiral tooth out the front of their mouths. Scientists don't know exactly what this tooth is for. It might help narwhals hunt for fish, it might let them test how salty the water is, or it might just be a way for narwhals to show off to other narwhals how strong and healthy they are. 
Another mysterious sea creature of the Arctic is the Greenland shark. This shark has adapted to move and grow very slowly to conserve energy in the freezing water. They grow so slowly that they reach adulthood at around 150 years old. Scientists studied one Greenland shark that was about 400 years old when it was caught.